It's unique as a Victorian science library in Ireland. This is one of the few complete collections that continued from the 1840s until today as part of the Working Science Collection. The Royal College of Science for Ireland Library is an important collection because it has the potential to be a leading research collection for the study of the history of science in Ireland. The Royal College of Science for Ireland Library is one of the most comprehensive Victorian science libraries in existence. It is unique in Ireland and UCD has had the privilege of inheriting this vast collection of approximately 15,000 items. The James Joyce Library and Special Collections contain thousands of books, maps, pamphlets, journals and other printed materials which were once part of the College of Science Library and that of its predecessor, the Museum of Irish Industry. The Royal College of Science was established in 1867. Its origins were in, in fact, the Museum of Irish Industry, which had started life, in fact, as the Museum of Economic Geology in 1845, become an industrial museum by the end of that decade, just after the famine, and became linked as a, to a government school of science established in 1854. The Government School of Science at the museum provided courses in a range of scientific subjects, specifically for the middling classes, people who were not going to university, people who were running their own businesses, who were trying to acquire scientific knowledge and move up maybe in a career. But by 1867, it was decided to make more formal the scientific education and the College of Science was established. It, it was established as a new college, but based in the old Museum of Irish Industry buildings, where it in fact stayed until 1911. The majority of the teaching staff from the museum moved over there as professors, and the, the library collections subsequently expanded. It was described the year after it was established as the finest pure school of science anywhere in British Isles. The late Victorian and Edwardian eras constituted a golden age for science in Ireland with distinguished scholars such as Father Nicholas Callan, George Francis Fitzgerald and George Johnston Stoney working and teaching in Irish universities and institutions. Another noted scientist and a leading advocate for the development of science education in Ireland was the eminent chemist and physician Sir Robert Kane, who was the college's first dean. He was a very much an internationally recognised chemist but in fact then became more interested in scientific education and believed that scientific education and the lack of it in Ireland was one of the reasons why, our economy, why the Irish economy was not developing properly. So really from the 1840s his focus was on providing scientific education so that we could learn to use the resources of the country in order to improve our own economy and become economically independent. With Kane as Dean, the College of Science aimed to provide education in the sciences, both for educational and industrial purposes. The broad range of subjects taught meant that from the beginning the library covered an enormous array of topics. Over time, the need for more space to properly house the college and its library became apparent, and in 1899 a parliamentary committee recommended the construction of new buildings on Marion Street. The splendid new building complex, now Irish Government Buildings, was designed by Sir Aston Webb and officially opened by George V in 1911. From looking at the material in the collection, I think it shows us that, first of all, the Royal College of Science was an innovative institution in that um, there are lots of books on practical chemistry and practical physics. And we know also that there were very modern for the time labs um, set up in the Royal College of Science buildings on Marion Street. So this shows that it was um, innovative in its teaching of practical chemistry and practical physics in a way that the other universities in Dublin and in Ireland at the time um, were not. So for example a lot of students that were studying in the Catholic University of Ireland Medical School would have attended courses in the Royal College of Science on these subjects as it was the only place that was teaching them. So the library reflects that. Also if you look through the books you can see that a lot of them are very beautiful books with particularly say the, the books relating to the industrial arts and the books relating to engineering as well as botany and zoology. Loads of these books have beautiful plates that must have been quite expensive to purchase at the time. So I think this shows that that the Royal College of Science really valued its library and saw its library as a very um, integral part of its college. Following the emergence of the Irish Free State, the college came under the remit of the Department of Education and in 1926 the Royal College of Science for Ireland 
was incorporated into the Faculty of Science of University College Dublin. The books were amalgamated with the books that were in UCD's um, Faculty of Science. And then as time went on, it was, they were integrated and interfiled with those books. So the Royal College of Science Library lost its cohesiveness. The library was completely dispersed, so that's why we initiated a project to actually try and ascertain the size of this collection and what parts of the collection were in, were in the various locations. Um, and we wanted to do this in order to, with the goal of eventually bringing it together. This survey project, a collaboration between UCD Library's Special Collections and UCD's Centre for the History of Medicine in Ireland under Dr Catherine Cox, successfully secured funding from Wellcome Trust to employ archivist Antoinette Doran to carry out a survey of the College of Science holdings. The survey of the holdings involves looking at the size of the collection, the subject matter contained in the collection, as well as the, the requirements for consolidation of the collection. The conclusions of the report pointed towards the need for extensive cataloguing work to be carried out in order to gain full intellectual control of the collection. The collection could be utilised in a number of ways, specifically building on projects which have already been initiated, for example the digitisation project initiated by the Irish Virtual Research Library and Archive. The collection may also be used to house exhibitions, both online and in-house. The collection offers excellent collaborative potential, both in terms of within the university itself and also externally collaborating with other universities and institutions which hold similar collections. I think the fact that there is such a growing awareness and so much effort has been put in by the people involved into making people aware of its actual existence has been a very big step. Making people aware of the fact that this collection, which reflects the interests, um, what was available, and the sort of library that a real science institution would have had, would have collected, would have developed, would have used in the 19th century as an integral collection. And as I say, going back from 1840, going from 1845 right the way up to 1926 um, is the way it could be used. I can see it being of interest to historians of science, to scientists, could be used and certainly utilised by um, people who are interested in the history of libraries as a complete science library. There are themes in the collection, for example, the themes of the exhibitions from the 19th century, 19th century um, survey and engineering projects in Ireland, the actual the history of science education in Ireland that could be research themes and if academics were aware of the fact that we have this wonderful collection, they could encourage their students to use um, this collection in their own research. We hope in the future that all of the Royal College of Science Library would be held in one environmentally controlled storage area um, and that everything from the main library store and special collections um, could be drawn together so that the Royal College of Science Library is as it was um, in its cohesiveness and coherency again as um, this unique Victorian Science Library.